Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, Conquering Everest. Edmund Hillary slowly led the way down the mountain from Camp 2 to Camp 1. Tenzing Norgay, who was roped to Hillary, followed behind. The two men were weaving their way between huge towers of ice. Suddenly, the snow under Hillary's feet gave way. He fell into what seemed like a bottomless crevice. Tenzing, Tenzing, he shouted. As Hillary fell, Tenzing jammed his ice axe into the snow and threw himself down beside it. Luckily, the rope and the axe held. Hillary wound up dangling 15 feet down inside the crevice. He, it took all of Tenzing's strength to haul Hillary up. The stain on his hands was so great that it ripped holes in his gloves. But thankfully, Tenzing managed to pull his climbing partner out of the crevice to safety. Back at Camp 1, Hillary told everyone, Without Tenzing, I would have been finished today. Tenzing and Hillary were part of a British mountain climbing expedition. Their goal was to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world. No one had ever climbed the 29,028-foot monster. Over the past 30 years, at least 10 other expeditions had tried. Some had come close, but in the end, they all failed to reach the top. Along the way, several climbers and their guides had died. But now, in May 1953, Hillary and Tenzing hoped to be the ones who made it. Tenzing, who had tried and failed to climb to the summit six times before, later said, Only one thing mattered to me, and that was Everest, to climb Everest. Hillary, an Englishman, was a beekeeper by profession. He climbed mountains for fun. Tenzing, on the other hand, climbed mountains for a living. Tenzing was a Sherpa, one of the rugged mountain people who live in Nepal. Sherpas became famous as porters and guides to those who wanted to climb in the Himalayan mountains. Tenzing, it was said, was the toughest of a tough race. His adventures in the mountains earned him the nickname Tiger of the Snows. Tenzing once wrote, The man has never been born, of course, who does not have some difficulties on a peak like Everest. One of the difficulties is simply breathing. Above 20,000 feet, the air is very thin. Most climbers bring their own supply of oxygen. Even so, they suffer headaches, sore throats, and nausea. They lose their appetite. Sleeplessness is such a problem that many climbers take sleeping pills. Exhaustion and frostbite can defeat any climber. And the threat of accidental death is always present. Death might come from an avalanche, a falling boulder, or bad snow. Bad snow is snow over a deep crevice that won't support the weight of a human being. Storms are another danger. A climber who gets caught in a storm can't get back to camp before nightfall is in big trouble. Hillary and Tenzing knew that climbing Everest would be a monumental task. They couldn't possibly do it alone. It took a total team effort. Their team was made up of a dozen climbers as well as 20 Sherpas. The overall leader of the attempt was Colonel John Hunt. He was the one who made the final decisions, and he was the one who decided that Tenzing and Hillary should be the two to try for the summit. The climbers had to set up a series of camps along the route to the summit. First, they set up Camp 1. The team used this as base camp for setting up Camp 2. That became the base for establishing Camp 3, and so forth. There was a lot of traveling back and forth between the camps. Naturally, the wind, cold, and snow made the higher camps more difficult to establish. Slowly, the members of the team thinned out. Most of them dropped out by design, but some members unexpectedly got sick and had to quit early. By the time the team established Camp 7, there were only 19 members left. By Camp 8, at 27... 1,500 feet, the number dropped to six. The plan for Camp 9, the last camp, called for just two members. Those two would be Tenzing and Hillary. On May 28, Tenzing, Hillary, and three others headed up the ice and snow to set up Camp 9. The other climbers carried the vital supplies Tenzing and Hillary would need. Then they returned to Camp 8 to wait. Meanwhile, Tenzing and Hillary hacked a space barely large enough to pitch a tent. Then they tried, without much luck, to sleep. They would make their assault on the summit the following day. The two men got up at 3.30 the next morning. The weather was calm and clear. At this altitude, however, the brain works slowly. Everything takes at least five times as long to do. It took three hours for the men to thaw out boots, get dressed, check their equipment. 
Tenzing and Hillary didn't crawl out of their tent until 6.30. The final climb was arduous step-by-step -step test of endurance and courage. First, Hillary led the way, cutting steps in the snow. Tenzing took over the lead. The two kept switching back and forth to conserve their energy. At one point, they encountered an almost vertical white wall. The snow was not firm. It kept crumbling as they tried to scale it. Tenzing later wrote, It was one of the most dangerous places I had ever been on a mountain. Even now, when I think of it, I can still feel as I felt them. The hair almost stands up on the back of my hands. Somehow they made it past the wall of snow. Now they had only a 300-foot ridge to cross. On the left side, there was an 8,000-foot drop. On the right side was covered with snow cornices hanging out over a 10,000-foot drop. Tenzing and Hillary wisely stuck to the middle of the ridge. At 11.30 a.m. that day, May 29, 1953, they stepped together onto the summit of Mount Everest. On the summit, Tenzing and Norge buried some sweets. Sherpas sometimes offer sweets to those who are near and dear to them. Tenzing felt that Everest was like a special friend. As he covered his offering, he made a silent prayer. Seven times I had come to the mountain of my dream, he later wrote. And on this, the seventh, with God's help, the dream had come true.